Good afternoon and thank you for your presence today. I'm Anushree Ramchandani and I head the Content India show. The inaugural edition, edition of Context 2020 is scheduled to be held in Mumbai from 29th to the 31st of October. Context 2020 is organized by the German trade fair company, Nuremberg Messe India, and is also a part of their ABIS platform. ABIS stands for Asia's Broadcast and Infotainment Show. And in the coming years, ABIS, with its three shows, the Broadcast India Show, the Satellite and Cable TV Show, and now the Content India Show, will be Asia's premier trade show destination for the media and entertainment and broadcast professionals. On behalf of Nuremberg Messe India, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed panelists, and our moderator, as well as all our participants. Today's show is about discussing the way forward in reviving the stalled shoes and exploring the new business models. I would now like to introduce to you our moderator, Shweta Rajpal Kohli. She's the Director of Government Affairs and Public Policy at Salesforce. She's a known face for most of us because she's been right into our homes thanks to her stint at NDTV as their business editor. Before I hand over to Shweta, I would request once again all of you to please mute yourselves, rather mute your microphones. And at the end of this session, there will be a Q&A and you can put your questions in the chat box. Thank you all and over to Shweta. Thank you so much, uh, Anushree. And uh, it's a great uh, to have everyone here join this session. Uh, it is very interesting that in these times we're exploring what's going on in various industries. And today we're really going to be talking about uh, the content industry, what's happening to shoots. Uh, and the topic of discussion is really reviving stalled shoots, exploring new business models in today's uh, COVID era. Anushri, thanks uh, for inviting me to do this because uh, it's exciting not just for us uh, to track this very, very interesting industry, but also as consumers, you know, ultimately it's important for us to know what's really going to happen as far as the content, the entertainment industry is concerned. Let me kick off right away by introducing our very esteemed set of panelists here today for the webinar. Uh, we've got Arun Thapar, President uh, Content and Marcom, AETN 18, and the TV18 a &E Networks uh, joint venture. Uh, we've got Aparna Acharikar, Programming Head of Z5 uh, India. Shagata Mukherjee, Content Head, uh, Sony Lib. And Sanjay Vadva, Managing Partner of uh, AP International. Thank you all for being here. Let me first kick off by getting a sense of what we have all been doing in these times. You know, these are very, very interesting times. Uh, these are tough times and yet times that are going to reset and reboot many, many industries. So let me first get a sense of what is it that you have been consuming as consumers? What is it that you've been watching? And let me kick off by probably bringing in Aparna here first off. Aparna, three months of lockdown for most people. Uh, it's, it's obviously seen a huge uptick when it comes to viewership. Everyone's spending time a lot more on their entertainment devices. But what is it that you personally have been consuming? What's kept you busy as far as the entertainment zone is concerned? What's kept me busy is uh, really working hard during this time because this has been the time really when all OTT numbers, when the focus has been OTT, we've all been at home and everyone's only consuming content mostly digitally. So I've personally been working very, very hard keeping India calm and entertained. Uh, spent a lot of time with the family also and that really felt good, you know. So a lot of my early, the early years of my son was spent with mom being in office all the time. So it felt great at least seeing him grow up in the last one quarter. And then, of course, catching up on a lot of content, right? So a lot of our own shows that I possibly only saw at the edit table or saw when, you know, only read screenplays off, but never really got the time to see them finally when they went on screen. So a lot of that. Um, also, brings a lot on uh, nostalgic content because that possibly brought back uh, some really good memories of uh, good times, exposed uh, my son to a lot of 70s and 80s movies because those were so different from what he ends up seeing on, uh, you know, most uh, in theaters or, in, uh, or on OTT today. So yes, it's been, uh, it's been a very different experience. Last three months have been absolutely different you know to say any, any one show that you'd like to talk about or any series anything that you watch that you would have probably not had the time to do if it was not for for the covid era 
Not really, and you know, and I would be too, you know, I would be too tempted to take a Z5 name, but yes, you know. Go ahead. I'm, Why not? Why not? <laughs> but I, I, you know, I must say, uh, Shweta, um, the entire OTT industry has warmed up so well, and believe me, in the normal course of things, when you know we just watch each other's promos, I've been uh, watching a lot of. Uh, content that uh, you know uh, fellow uh, ott makers have put out whether it's amazon netflix boot hotstar you know z5 also we've had a spate of launches every week across different languages so um, in fact uh, there's something to learn from the way content is getting created from uh, all ott makers in india i don't have a favorite but uh, yes i think we're all doing a very good job and the next couple of years india is going to see some really great content coming from india absolutely india seems to be the hub when it comes to content but how are we going to rejig some of those business models that will continue to be the discussion and for many of you who are, who've just joined in we are really going to discuss uh, how we will revive some of those stalled shoots and how business models are going to change in the covid era let me pass uh, let me move on now to get uh, arun thapar's views arun uh, interesting times again but uh, uh, what is it that you're consuming on on your television set or any other device that you use for consuming content these days? Well, thanks, Shweta. Thanks for having me, Anushree. Uh, well, first and foremost, officially, I consume only History TV 18 because it simply is the best content out there. But unofficially <laughs> and strictly between you and me, of course, I think there's just such a plethora of uh, amazing work out there that the OTTs are doing, especially given that they are unshackled and un by considerations of self-censorship, etc. So the dreaded C word doesn't apply to the OTT industry and I hope that continues for a long time and I hope uh, you know people can look favorably upon television as well when it comes to those things. Uh, but if I was to name something from Z5, then Shagato from Sony Live might feel bad and if I was to name something from his network, then Aparna might not like it. And if I name things from both Z5 and from Sony Live, then Mate said, uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime and Boot, etc. might not like it. So let me not just name one show, although there's some great stuff out there. What I would like to do is extend my heartiest congratulations to this larger creative community out there, whether it's on broadcast, whether it's on OTT, uh, for making and doing the kind of things they do, and particularly to colleagues at News TV 18 um, for soldiering on, really, and across, across the network, across the airwaves, the kind of coverage that our colleagues in news have been bringing us, keeping us up to date, keeping us informed. That's, uh, that's laudable and commendable and my full congratulations for them. And I think despite whatever the challenges might be at the moment for the creative community, I think India has its own unique ways of uh, dealing with crisis and ingenuity and creativity is really at the heart of this. So I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get past this really quick. Otherwise, it's been an interesting time. Work from home is not something I'm used to. Um, uh, typically, I mean, the criticism that I've often got uh, is that you're not, you're not strictly corporate, you creative types don't have a time to sleep and you don't have a time to wake up and you do things on your own time and so on and so forth. I think the entire world is gradually moving to that work from home and uh, set up and most people will be working like this and uh, avoiding the barber while they're doing so. All right. Thank you, Arun. I think everyone is being uh, politically correct right now and not... Uh, naming specific shows and I do understand that but I'm hoping to get uh, some names out there I'm sure all the participants and all those who are attending the webinar would like some recommendations uh, from our panelists but uh, let's move on to Shagatha Mukherjee and uh, try and see uh, what he has been watching consuming and doing during these times Shagatha. Hi Anushri hi uh, thanks Shweta uh, it's been thank you so much for having me over here uh, I think the last three months have been really, really taxing. You know, as you know, that we're just sort of in the middle of a big reboot, and uh, Sony Live is uh, relaunching with the new app. So I've hardly had any time. I don't think I've worked harder ever before. So I think it's been it's it's not been easy with you know uh, the tech teams across the globe working to figure out the app, working on the architecture, working on the content. So it's been a fabulous uh, three months of uh, work put together and what I got to know is that you know uh, I mean it's not easy to have a war room set in different continents right it's we are, uh, we are a week away from launch and we're working remotely and working rather well I think that's been a big uh, uh, so uh, yeah I think as far as uh, w watching a lot of content 
I think I had been watching too much of my, too many of mine because I'm uh, I have been readying them to launch over the next few months. So I've had ha- I've had hardly any time to watch anything else. Uh, but uh, you know, my son's 11 years old, so I do give him company. And there are times when we do watch a lot of stuff that he watches. Uh, things that I, you know, I mean, I try uh, to understand the best of my capabilities, but sometimes I, I don't. But uh, but something that uh, he loves watching, uh, you know, some of the car shows that he watches, you know, he wants to sort of be a, uh, take me there. Uh, I know that he's a big, you know, for the first time, I think I've watched too many episodes of Big Bang Theory. Uh, <laughs> Which, which I always wanted to uh, watch, but you know, I never had the time. Uh, uh, but uh, thanks to my son, I've uh, managed to watch a couple of seasons of, of that of, of Big Bang Theory, yes. All right, that's interesting. Sanjay, over to you now. Uh, tell us a little more about uh, what's, what's been top of your mind last uh, three months, as well as uh, something interesting that you may have watched or you might like to share with our uh, participants. Uh, good evening, everybody. So I've been uh, catching up on uh, uh, Sacred Games and a couple of series on uh, uh, Netflix. I normally do not watch uh, much on TV. I'm more a theater guy. I prefer to watch on theater, but of course, because of lack of uh, being able to watch it on theater, I've been watching it at home. Uh, Sacred Games is something I followed a couple of other English series on, on uh, Netflix. Okay, thanks for that, Sanjay. And let's now dive straight into what the future of the industry looks like. What are the trends we're picking up? Uh, or what is it that we need to watch out for? How will business models change? And let me, let me actually throw it open, but see if uh, possibly we can have uh, Arun come in on this specific topic of, uh, of, you know, what we're really addressing all the time, which is OTT versus broadcast. How is it that the industry has really changed? There is a lot of conversation going on about just the kind of explosion we've seen in the OTT space. How will that impact broadcasting? Uh, whether the lines between the two are blurring and what the future looks like. And, and especially uh, what has changed because of uh, the COVID era, so to say. Arun, any broad level, high level thoughts around that topic? Well, I think uh, at a high level, I think the distinction is kind of artificial. I think it's a bit facetious, to be honest, to start uh, differentiating between OTT versus television. I mean, there's enough uh, pointing in the direction of a collaboration, if anything, going forward. Um, And I think um, that really is the future. It's about being where the consumer is. It's about doing the best for each business and about creating great content at the end of the day and platforms will gradually become redundant and content, etc., will be king and, and it'll be pretty much platform agnostic. Right now we talk about content that's multi-platform. I think the real world really is platform agnostic. Um, look at uh, OTT, for example. They started off as being aggregators. All the great shows that you see out there, uh, they started whether it was, you know, the game-changing Game of Thrones, etc., etc. These didn't start off necessarily as OTT productions. They started off as television productions and I think that pretty much continues even recently as as recently as today there was news out there that uh, a broadcaster has created a studio that will be supplying Netflix with a lot of original content and I think that's pretty much happening worldwide and, and that will continue and I think my my fellow panelists here today will will confirm what I just said that there is now an opportunity and a real need for OTT and television to collaborate to put their minds together and to create content would eventually uh, delights audiences, entertain, entertains audiences, enables audiences. Um, I think it's a question of reordering our priorities, rejigging our uh, and reevaluating our business models. And this will entail old rivals joining hands and doing things collaboratively. So I think that's the broad theme, really. Um, this, is, this is a cataclysmic event, COVID. Um, the meteor has hit, in a sense, and dinosaurs will get extinct. So it's really a question of whether you can adapt and be agile. And if you can, then your species will grow, survive, and thrive. If not, and if you cannot embrace the new business models and the new ways of thinking uh, and new technology as an enabler, then I'm afraid um, it's the end of the road. 
all right, strong words there, Arun, from you, where you're calling it, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an event that is really all set to shake up the industry and it's really going to be a survival game. Uh, Aparna, would you agree with that? Or do you think we're, we're reading too much into uh, how COVID and, and the pandemic that we're facing is going to really hurt the industry? Uh, it has already hurt the industry to a great extent, right? I mean, we've all, all of us have lost the complete first quarter to unfortunately no fresh telecasts on TV. Movies have been badly hit. Uh, in that sense, the only industry that has thrived in this duration is the OTT industry, right? And that too, because we work on a great bank, unlike television or unlike movies, which, you know, which have to work on content that's very recently uh, released, we go with the bank, we leverage the huge library we have. So that really uh, has been what differentiated OTT and you know, didn't impact us as much. We also had a lot of content that was always in the pipeline. So anything that was, you know, at its post-production stage needed only finer edits to go, was somehow managed with people from home and we could still put out. We went ahead and acquired a lot of content. So whether it was direct to digital movies or whether it was smaller films, you know, which typically would not have got uh, great theater releases, were also acquired by a lot of OTT. So, the, you know, in this phase, uh, OTT really was swift in that sense. And like uh, Arun said, right, I mean, uh, if you're a dinosaur and you cannot move swiftly, of course, you will, uh, you know, you will perish. And if you are agile, if you are swift and you take the opportunities, there is all reason that you will thrive. But yes, I'm coming back to your original question of the broadcast versus ODT. Coming uh, from the house of a broadcaster, uh, the lines have blurred now, right? There are no, there are, because we have to be where the consumers, we have to be, uh, if the consumer's mandate is that when he has free time or when he is traveling, he is going to have a phone in his hand and he is going to consume your content there, you have to be there, right? We cannot be very stuck up saying that this is going to be the only device that I will create content for. If the consumer wants to be on a connected device, if the consumer wants to be on the phone or if the consumer wants to be, you know, simply on a KaiOS device, a small geophone, you have to ensure you're programming uh, enough to, uh, to, you know, to take care of them there. So, yeah. All right. Everybody talks of agility and the need to really evolve, the need to be to make sure that you are uh, becoming more and more relevant to the consumer. But but those those words are easier said than actually practiced. Uh, uh, you know, Shagata, my question to you is: How are we ensuring agility in our business model? Is it is it even practical and possible at a time when the entire world is is in lockdown? How are we How are we thinking ahead? Sorry, uh, I think, uh, you know, most of the OTT players have been rather agile in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of getting the, uh, their acquisitions late full. You know, I think all the, all the OTT players have been acquiring whether small movies or international content or content which was probably previously available has been made available a little faster. I think they've been agile in funneling it, right? I think... That is why the last three months, in spite of the fact that uh, everybody has been hit badly by this, uh, the OTTs have managed to not just survive, but also have had a significant spike in viewership, right? The great thing about OTTs, it's like a, it's like a bookshelf, right? And you are always uh, discovering. I think we've never, the, the audience for the first time, has really, really discovered content which was not essentially getting discovered because we were, uh, there's a barrage of content being uh, thrown at them all the time. So it's been a great time for most of us where we would find that the audiences are coming back and looking at content which probably even as broadcasters or you know, or even are as, uh, as, as OCD players have forgotten. So, uh, so it's, 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 it's been, Interesting uh, for our teams to look at how do you make those discoverabilities easier? How do you look at the kind of uh, trends that we follow? Good thing about, about this business is, you know, you have real-time uh, uh, data. And the real-time data allows you to sort of even uh, stack up content, which seems like doing really, really well. So I think there have been learnings, great learnings over the last three months. Uh, and I think this is going to be the way, you know, you need to be nimble. You need to be finding the right stories for your platform. You cannot be looking at, I mean, of course we will buy, uh, we will do those big shows 
you know, which will take years to make and, you know, it will have the expanse of, you know, the, 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 the kind of things that we would need. But we will also be need to have, you'll need to have those nimble ideas executed quickly, use technology a little bit more. Uh, I think those are the things that we need to be really cued into. I think techno technology is the big thing that most players, whether uh, as, as, you know, content makers or, you know, or acquirers or, or the broadcasters, which who they would need to in, invest inordinately in, uh, given the times that we are in. And going back to your uh, initial question about broadcast versus OTT, I think that's been laid to rest for a while now. I think it's, uh, I think it's never been better for the content audience ever before. I think everybody has a voice. It's become much more democratic. The platforms have given them a chance to come and tell their stories. Uh, not just the ones which are curated. There are, you know, there's YouTube. There are platforms who are uh, sending you, uh, you know, uh, content which is you can freely upload. So I think it's been very, very good. I think technology has allowed you to make uh, uh, the the ecosystem much much bigger than it was it used to be before. All right, interesting there, and let's see how life has changed for film producers and distributors, and whether there's going to be a reset here, uh, Sanjay. Your especially because uh, the big question is whether uh, we're going to see theaters come back to life anytime soon. Are we going to see people feel safe going back? Uh, into a theater to watch a movie or has that changed forever because of this pandemic? So as uh, as we speak, uh, Japan has opened up fully for theaters. Korea has opened up fully for theaters. Uh, the Emirate of Dubai theaters have opened up. US is talking about opening up by June end or July first week. Everybody's waiting for Tenet to come out. India, unfortunately, we're still uh, grappling with the uh, pandemic here. So it's, it's probably I don't know, at, at the risk of uh, sounding very positive, I don't, at the earliest, I think probably August is when we should be able to open up. Uh, things have changed in terms of, uh, uh, unless the, even the theatres outside the country, they don't have new content coming in. They're just right now playing only content that has already been screened prior to the lockdown. People are coming, but not in as many numbers because in this three month, most of these films have been uh, made put to the OTT platforms. Uh, my feeling is that people will come back. There will be uh, an abundant amount of precaution being taken, but yes, they will come back. At the same time, I think uh, we need to make sure that we are evolving the business model because even though, uh, Sanjay, we can be hopeful that things will normalize and we're going to see business as usual, let's face it, it isn't business as usual anymore. And there is a clear reset that has happened. I just want to ask any of the panelists to come in and at least identify the one thing that has changed for your industry uh, that has been in some ways either a lesson learned or even perhaps, uh, you know, something that you think will be done differently uh, when it comes to your business model in the post-COVID era. Well, if uh, I may be allowed here for half sure, a second, I, I think more than anything else, Shweta, all our responses to the current crisis will to a large extent be shaped on our capacity to deal with ambiguity. Uh, there are more questions at the moment than there can possibly be any answers. Uh, learnings are on the way. New thinking about new ways of doing things. Um, look at work from home, for example. Could any of us in any of our industries have imagined that as much could happen without the physical presence of hundreds and thousands of people concentrated into one building or workspace? Suddenly, the entire work from home idea is borrowing from a completely different paradigm, from, a, in, uh, from an employer-enforced accountability upon the employee. You have, not moved to a, you have now moved to a system where it's an employee-led and trust-based and outcome-oriented uh, system of work. Now, that's a massive shift in my opinion. And going forward, this will have repercussions for the real estate industry. Uh, and in the sense, free up more capital because more and more offices will be given up and that capital 
uh, re-employed to make more content for our industry. Uh, so, I mean, these are, these are just some of the new things that are happening right now. The embracing of technology, um, the fact that people are going to start re-evaluating uh, televisions or broadcasts, traditional broadcasts, dependence on advertising, on the way advertising is sold, on how agencies create these artificial divisions often between digital advertising and broadcast-based linear television advertising. A lot of things are going to be rejigged. But going forward, a lot of ambiguity can be expected. The entire idea of five-year business plans goes out the window. We're literally planning for 12 months and 18 months and seeing how things happen. There's a hell of a lot of uncertainty out there. And our ability to deal with and constantly recalibrate to the emerging situation externally will um, determine how we do in our businesses. Anyone else would like to add to that? Any other panelists in terms of, of, of changing business models? Of course, uncertainty is the name of the game now, uh, but anything that you were picking up as a specific trend? No, I think the two things which we need to be very, very mindful of is that how can we pivot? How can we pivot quickly? And how nimble can we be, right? I think those times of creating content over years together is, is sort of gone by. I think we need to be very quick. We need to be nimble and we need to sort of look at the uh, way of transferring, the, you, know, you know, making the, the life cycle of a show or a film shorter. And, uh, and I think freeing up uh, of those big five-year plans is something that we need to sort of really, really uh, put our minds together on. If so I may if, add to, yeah, if sure. I can, yeah, yeah, I I'll can come comment here. Uh, Aparna, if I, uh, Sanjay, we'll just come to you in a moment. Aparna, go ahead. Yeah, if I may add to what um, Arun and uh, Shagato just said, we will have to be a lot more resource conscious, right? So whether it's the human resource or whether it's our finances, because you know, like, not just this quarter, but really how the, the uncertainty that we see for the next couple of years, because the COVID situation is not anything that will possibly go away in the next six months or, you know, we may just walk into this sort of uncertainty with, uh, uh, with the next financial year also. So taking care of our resources very well, whether it's the people we work with or whether it's the monies we have or whether it's the content, uh, whether it's any content ideas we have, right? I mean, we for once are looking at, uh, at content and OTT, in fact, the beauty of OTT is you're able to do a lot more. You don't, don't always have to be very big scale and grand. You can do a lot more meaningful content in limited resources and limited time. So we are actually looking at strategies of how we can optimize resources on every count so that we can, you know, survive a lot better. And, you know, like we all agree, it's going to be the survival of the fittest, survival of those who can make those uh, quick moves in the industry and can, you know, and can retain their dominance. So, yeah. Right. Resource consciousness is going to be the mantra. Uh, Sanjay, your thoughts there. Yeah. So my, uh, my thought on this is like, I'm, I'm coming from the theater aspect. Uh, when the theaters open up, uh, we don't know, first of all, with what limitations we'll open up, whether we'll be allowed 30% occupancy, 40% occupancy. And then on top of that, the other issue is whether the people will be willing, the mindset change of the people for two reasons. One is the health. And second thing is also the fact that they've kind of got used to watching their content at home. So would they be want, you know, prefer to wait for four weeks, six weeks and wait to watch it at home? That's another question. Uh, what's going to be actually affected in my view is the large, the tentpole films that's going to get hit. For example, uh, one of the big A-lister hero films, when you have the weekend uh, with 100% occupancy in the theater or the 95% occupancy, the problem you have is when you have only 40% allowed to be sold, will that be good enough to keep the, uh, you know, the, the, the income in place vis-a-vis -vis the cost that we've already incurred? Please understand, we've already incurred all the costs in, you know, maybe hundreds of films that are ready and waiting to go. That is a calculation that, you know, people will have to take. Maybe going forward, there could be, uh, you know, uh, methods of remunerations or the big tentpole films will probably change where the uh, key talent will start taking a percentage of the box office. I'm talking specifically with the South. Right, right. Uh, okay. Uh, in fact, Sanjay, if I could just come to you for one more moment to especially talk about the strategy of uh, uh, film producers uh, and, and content when it comes to 
pure blockbuster films going forward are we going to suddenly see a change in trend and this is being talked about globally as well where earlier there were theater only movies uh, then you had ott only but now we're going to see a some sort of a hybrid model come through where people would realize that because of the changing uh, nature and covid having accelerated this trend uh, we're now going to see uh, movies being released probably same day across theaters and uh, on ott platforms uh Honestly, I don't know if that's going to be a possibility, at least in India, because the the theatrical revenues are very high, and uh, you know we don't have the premium T ward window like they have in the US, like they had for Trolls, where they have the premium T ward window. That's not yet uh, prevalent here. India has only an S ward uh, component. But if you notice, if you go back about 15 years, in in the US there were a lot of quaint filmmakers who would make films for 150 or 200000 dollars and these were movies that would go only to video and hbo right so the possibility is going to be where the medium films the b or b plus films people will make only for digital content and say okay let's take it straight to ott because for the simple reason you don't have to fight with you know getting dates for your uh, for your product you don't right. have to fight with getting uh, your publicity in place and then the theater operator when he has five movies available with him he's going to give the tent pole film bigger screening he's going to give you smaller screenings so all these battles are going to be there you will have a lot of producers will now come and say okay this is some is is a uh, you know we found this opportunity or this small niche let's make only for this niche okay got that now let's get into specifics and dive into some specific changes that we're going to see for instance uh, when it comes to protocols and sops in place for shooting now we know that with social distancing norms in place it's going to get a lot harder it's easier said than done when it comes to saying okay uh, you know follow these protocols this is how shoots need to uh, you know be be reinstated uh, tell us what practical challenges you're anticipating when it comes to really reviving the stalled shoots uh, will it be really difficult or it's something that we can cope with because uh, that is uh, something that every industry is coping with after all so it's 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 something that we can learn to live with or do you think that the content and entertainment industry will be particularly badly hit because it's very very hard to follow social distancing protocols when it comes to shoots um anybody would like to take that uh, at this moment um Shweta, this has um, see we are all in it together, right? And this has just begun uh, for us, you know. Um, the teams are sending me so, like for example, we've start uh, we've started shoot in Hyderabad, and the team sent uh, videos of you know uh, crew members wearing PPE kits and the sanitization that happens, and there are only thirty five of them uh, on floor there. So these are all newer things, right? I mean, at this moment, th these are videos that. we are also shocked and quite amazed to see because it almost looked like a hospital setting and not a set you know so things things are evolving things are looking very different um how different will it be at this moment as the industry i think we should all stand by with the government because they are you know we've had numerous interactions with the government and we do see them also wanting to help us out so that we can come back in business but we have to understand that any un, one any one unfortunate incident that any of our sets will really jeopardize uh, you know business for all of us so um then really pushing ourselves and saying that okay we want to be the first ones to go and we want to you know uh, relax this and relax that we should cooperate with them and take it as it uh, comes right i mean it will it will be uh, hard for us and we are all working closely together with the government but yes you know uh, a more uh, a more cooperative approach between the government and us will really help all of us uh, thrive so yes times are difficult but that is going to be uh, the new normal you know like uh, people have asked me questions like how do you plan to shoot intimate scenes now you know will your actors be ready and i said you know that's believe me the least of my worries at this moment ensuring the safety security of all of my crew members at the, with without hampering anything uh, of business is really a key important aspect so creative changes in content can always happen but we'll take it one step at a time and i'm sure there's already an impact that we've seen you know when it comes to a lot of uh, uh, employees or a lot of a lot of people working in this industry could also be daily wage uh, earners you know uh, whether it's the spot boys it's the lightmen it's the technicians uh, how badly has that aspect also hurt uh, the revival process anybody would like to comment on that or or now if you want to take that forward 
um, as part of our CSR uh, initiatives at Z, you know, we are, all the shoots that were stalled because of this, you know, we've reached out to all our producers and especially a level, you know, that is very badly hit because they're all uh, on daily wages. We've reached out to them and created a corpus that is being uh, you know, distributed as part of the Z CSR. So, you know, in that sense, for all our shoots, uh, we've ensured that they're all taken care of. And, and also, uh, I think, yeah, Arun, go ahead. Yeah. What what we might need to be cognizant of is there is a slowdown in production. Uh, so when we say restarting the creative economy or productions, etc., what scale are you going to begin them or restart them at becomes uh, becomes the really talking point. You're not looking at large scale productions which necessitate the congregation of hundreds of people on, into a single set. Um, and I have to say, even though this might sound a little harsh, but the development of infrastructure in what was the mecca of media and entertainment in India has not kept up with the kind of demand there is and the kind of uh, price that is demanded for content production within the film and, uh, and television space, particularly in fiction. Uh, if you go to Mehboob Studios or you go to Film City, the infrastructure there should have been ramped up years and years ago. None of that has happened. Maybe this is the wake up call now, given that there's a reordering of priorities that health and safety concerns need to be top of mind. Now, there will be a downstream effect on the kind of pricing that comes when studios start investing more money in infrastructure. In, in fact, that's a very important point. Uh, and I do want to take that forward and, and talk about the budget impact that this will have because again putting in place those protocols is easy but that's obviously going to have some impact on on budgets and, and the pass through that has to take place so arun elaborate on the budget aspect and we can get others to also chime in on it so as far as budgetary aspects are concerned like i said first and foremost safety uh, is is crucial um, none of the broadcasters are forcing people to come to work for example similarly None of us who commission programs or executive producers on programs uh, are going to go out there and say, you have to make this because I have a client waiting. It is essentially a collaborative enterprise. And unless and until any, everybody show that things can be done at a more scaled down level, employing more ingenuity and perhaps some technical savviness of perhaps creating things on, on phones, for example, with lean crews and, you know, crews outfitted with PPE kits with the requisite permissions in areas that are relatively safe, um, shoots and productions that um, involve celebrities shooting a lot of stuff of their own or, or with one or two members in their homes uh, on, on, on telephones or basic kits, considering everything is 4K and, and HD even on handheld devices these days. So a lot of that kind of innovation within content creation is happening. Uh, taking a lot of lessons from UGC and user-generated uh, content. So A, that, that's one thing, different styles of filming. Secondly, what is driving the creative economy? At the end of the day, it's not about rating, right? Television ratings have gone up 43% at its peak. Now it's settled about 15%. History TV 18 ratings went up 60% in other open audiences uh, for standard definition. In HD, they went up 133%. But the end result is not to get higher ratings, unlike perhaps, uh, subs uh, unlike perhaps um, OTT. It's not only about subscription numbers. It's about how much revenue you can drive at the back of it. And unless there's advertising backing it, and unless there are collections happening on the distribution front, that working capital just does not come to you. Right. And therefore, you need to start investing and in doing things which take less cash flow. Uh, so specific means will have to be taken to scale down productions and despite that, create the opportunities uh, to put content out there, which consumers are going to take, uh, uh, consume, and that can uh, be monetized. This also includes re-monetizing library content, customizing it, reskinning it, um, you know, completely repurposing it. So that's, that's another aspect. So it's not always about getting masses of crews out there, histology, and doing a lot of things remotely. I mean, there's a lot of, a production and post-production work that's happening remotely rather than under one roof. 
Okay, let me take forward that point that you've raised, Arun, around re-monetization, because that is the basic discussion we're having today, changing business models. What are the kind of ideas being talked about when it comes to monetization in these times? Shagata, uh, if you could uh, specifically address this issue around, uh, you know, monetization aspect. Are there interesting ideas, uh, a paper view concept, uh, you know, uh, aggregator, you know, Talk about the various different models and how that will change because as Arun was saying, monetization will be the key, especially now when survival is the game. And I think this is something that probably uh, uh, since, you know, it's, it's more about the broadcaster where monetization is probably getting affected more than uh, the OTTs. But however, however having said that, uh, I think OTTs like, uh, think, you know, broad broadcast-led OTTs like Sony or Z or Hotstar for that matter, we are a freemium model, right? We, are, we, we work on the basis of both the AVOD as well as the SVOD structures. Uh, we, uh, it's, there is only so much uh, money in the economy and, it, and let's, let, let's not shy away from the fact that it has depleted. And we need to be very mindful of the spends that we are making right now. So I think repurposing content of the uh, of of these broadcasters is a big thing. I think all of us have great libraries. We are constantly constantly trying to repurpose the libraries that we have. We are trying to sub and dub content from from our content down south or in Bangla or in Marathi, so that we can show the audience new content vis-a-vis what they've watched before. I think one needs to be a little more agile in terms of picking up smaller things now rather than looking at the big ticket ideas. The big ticket ideas will come, but I think the big ticket ideas also comes with a certain amount of big investment and big timeline. And those things need to be very, very uh, clearly demarcated out from the, the, the picture in the current scenario. Uh, in terms of uh, looking at how we are uh, adapting ourselves to the new, new world, I think for all of us, all the uh, studios and the OTT, uh, OTTs and the broadcasters, I think safety comes first. Yeah. Whatever, whatever what we, we, we might want our shows to be produced quickly, but the fact is that we are very mindful of the fact that we will not do anything which hampers the safety of our uh, technicians, of our actors, of, of anybody who's on the set. And mind you, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, we are in the business where people are in pro- close proximity with each other. And it's, it's the kind of business that we are in. We sure. can't get away from there, right? So we need to be a very, very, and, and we, we cannot push people to, to, to get into a, a, a set where uh, we cannot have social distance, distancing. So right. we are learning. I think we are learning and give, I think the next couple of months, new uh, uh, processes will emerge. And I think we will have to adapt to those. Right. So we, we've discussed OTT, we've discussed broadcast, but let's talk about the film industry in particular. Sanjay, and your thoughts here on, on the changing business model and, and what will be altered uh, and, and what are some of the ideas that are being talked about? So, uh, as I already mentioned to you, uh, the tent portal films going forward will definitely have an impact uh, because of the non-availability of the seats uh, capacity, at least for some time. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, as I told you, there's also those medium films that will come straight to the OTT. So, there will be, a, in fact, as we speak, uh, today there was a meeting of the Producers Council in Kerala where they called all the producers who were having underproduction products. There were 65 of them. And they were all asked specifically, are you going to go digital or are you going to go to, the, are you going to wait for the theater? So there were a few who said, I don't want to wait for the theater. I want to go straight to digital. So this is, it all stems from the fact that, you know, how well, see, you, you can't look at it from this point where, let's say you've got a film that's done very well because after two months of zero content, you've had uh, you know, some content coming out, people, everybody wants to watch it. Or for that matter, that there was enough of social media hype around the TV, uh, the theater versus the OTT battle that went on. So everybody knew about it. But if you look at it on the long term, is if these platforms are able to find that it is remunerative enough for, for them to do, they will come back and say, okay, fine, I want to make 10 movies a year, 12 movies a year. 
and i think uh, z has been doing it uh, even before the pandemic they've been actually picking up films and premiering straight on their their platform it's not okay. it's just that it's come into the limelight today because of whatever we've had but z has already been doing it specifically they've been picking up films i know for the last at least one one and a half years they've been picking up films from south india and playing it straight to their uh, service yeah and models that were that were being experimented are suddenly being accelerated i think that's the whole trend the things that you exactly. thought would come in maybe 2 years 3 years 10 years hence are now being seen as the, as the trend aparna specifically for you a question around pay per view and i think one of our participants has also asked that question is that a model that will seem like the preferred model going forward simply because it makes business sense to have a pay per view as far as ott is concerned uh, especially you know just given the kind of uh, kind of Uh, you know content analysis that's going on the kind of money that is being spent on acquiring some of those big budget uh, content or films or shows so perhaps that's that's a model that may make sense aparna we do see that as an evolving model with uh, great potential because especially i mean if you're looking at a direct to digital movie and if you're looking at a blockbuster coming directly to digital it may not be possible to put it directly into a subscription pack right so because then it gets you know that content becomes part of your larger library which gets uh, which gets into the subscription pack so uh, windowing uh, may just become uh, may just become something that we may also want to consider for our businesses because that is the in that sense it will you know because then you can price it at parity with theaters you can have you know you can have device restrictions you can have offline play restrictions there are restrictions with respect to how long that content can be made available so uh, in that since we can work very closely with theaters even when normal c returns for uh, you know for movies so right evolving right. models is something that will happen now that we have all got into a new normal right i think nobody has really elaborated on the impact on the creativity side of this business because after all we're forgetting this is a creative business and it is a business that thrives on 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 creativity on innovation anybody would like to throw light on on uh, whether creativity will be hampered or are we going to again see new business models when it comes to creativity now look at some of the web series just the fact that you know okay perhaps you're not going to go to fancy foreign locales for shooting anymore or the fact that your budgets are going to be tighter uh, will this necessarily lead us to more innovation and more creativity because you're experimenting with new ideas or do you think we're going to see a big big shake up because uh, you just can't use the old style creativity anymore so uh, th- yeah sorry thankfully uh, when it came to ott uh, shweta you know uh, it it was all always about creativity because you know it's always in the consumer's hand it's uh, you know it's a it's a pull sort of a model right it's not a push the consumer only has to you know there's just a cross button or just has to swipe left and then it's all gone so creativity is uh, creativity has always been at the forefront when it came to creating content for ott and now all the more because a uh, great content meaningful content is really what people are looking for so we released a movie last week called uh, chintu ka birthday and we've got such great reviews for the movie it's a small tight uh, uh, it's a small movie made with a very tight budget uh, made in a very tight budget but some great creations and a great story there and you know examples like bhoom ketu or chintu ka birthday have taught us really you know that it's not always about the big blockbusters it, it's not always that a 100 crore you know a film made with a 100 crore budget is the one that will you know please audiences or give pure delight or you know entertain people so it's really about how great content is how creative content is how engaging it is how real relevant and does it resonate with people who are watching it those really have emerged as the themes uh, one one thing i'd like to add in this is post the covid area uh, post the covid uh, uh, scenario and you know it, since it's going to go on for much longer we're looking at content that's a lot more hopeful joyful and inspirational because believe me there's so much catharsis all around us you know unfortunately you keep hearing deaths you keep hearing the number of rising cases you keep hearing how badly the economy is affected stories that can bring in smiles stories that can bring in you know they could be real they could they, they could be gritty but there there needs to be a lot of inspiration sure. joy hope in those stories so we are looking forward to really bringing out some content with uh, these themes in in the coming 
quick other comment on creativity because I know we're getting tons of questions from participants and I would like to take some of them and I want to be mindful of time as well. Uh, anyone else, a very quick comment on the creative aspect before we move on to other specific questions? I think Indians are, you know, always they have a way out. They will always find that jugar to do something very, very interesting without, you, you don't necessarily need that, you know, million dollar check to create, get that big blockbuster. But coming back to the film business, I think, you know, one has to really relook at it because I don't think there is much scope for that mid-list film any longer. I think there would be the big films which you would want to go into the theaters and enjoy it. Of course, you will go out and watch those big films. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm wary of the fact that uh, whether there would be a space for those uh, mid-list films. I don't think most OTTs uh, would either, would be very keen to take them up in the first place because I don't, because at that, that kind of a cost, monetizing those films becomes very, very difficult. So the filmmakers need to be really mindful what script to pick and what monies do they spend. And, and Sanjay, to you specifically around, of course, filmmakers uh, wanting to now, I mean, being forced to be very, very mindful of, of, of the kind of content they're developing and how, how uh, much it can be monetized. But what about theaters? I mean, let's just talk about whether their survival itself is at stake. And that's in fact a question that's been posted uh, also by one of the participants. What I, honestly, I honestly don't think uh, survival of the theater is an issue here because we have to understand uh, content is complementary across borders. They, we have windowing, okay? Let's, let's uh, put it like this. I'm sure all the platforms are getting requests to buy or rather being offered at least 20 times the product that they can actually buy. For example, uh, an Amazon would say I can buy example 20 films in Hindi every year, but I'm sure they're getting offered 200. Where are these 180 going to go? They have to go to the theaters and the tent poles honestly will never be able to uh, get into the uh, uh, premium or uh, OTT model for the simple reason. I'll give you a, a, a case uh, story here. We had the movie Ponmagal Vandal, which went live on Amazon. In exactly five minutes from it going live, it was pirated live streamed all across the world. So if you're going to have a T window, a premium T ward spot, and you're going to charge, let's say, 500 rupees for a viewer to watch, how long does it for, take for him to take an HDMI cable, plug it out, stream it through his server, and it's all out in the open? Right, right. Interesting okay. there. In fact, I'll just quickly ask you one other question that a viewer has sent. I think a, a participant, Harish Dhawan, uh, he's talked about specifically how do you resume shoots and still make it commercially viable, especially for small producers. Quick view there, uh, Sanjay, from you on, on commercial viability for small producers. The, it, it all will depend on the budget. Uh, we have to now go into the post-COVID era and look at what are our uh, avenues for uh, you know, recoveries of money, monetization. And depending on that, you have to uh, squeeze squeeze your budget and work it out. I mean, if the content is good and if it's made at a relatively decent budget, I'm sure a platform will pick it up. If Because the platforms, def like, like Archana said, she picked up a small film which gave her phenomenal results. So cost is, uh, is, is the key. Key element is the cost. And, and as far as shooting is concerned, we have to abide by the government's rules and, and make sure that all our uh, employees are, in fact, there's another comment that I need to make. Uh, forget about the COVID-related uh, uh, safety. I mean, our, our shooting spots are not safe on a general basis itself. I mean, we've had a recent uh, time in the month of February, we had a huge accident where uh, an A-list star could have actually got uh, hurt badly. He was like three seconds away from the crane falling. We had three people who died in Chennai. So we are not even safe on our, on our regular shoots. Oh, well, that, that of course, is, is, is a larger discussion and it's, it's indeed very, very sad. I, I don't I want to come to you specifically around a, a question that one of the participants has asked around, uh, you know, the, the complexion of our internet users, the fact that we keep talking about the big mobile boom and the fact that everything's going to be mobile and content will be watched on mobile. But ultimately, we're talking about a country like ours where, you know, you have vast majority of the people who do not have the kind of unlimited data plans you need for so, so much content viewing. So how do you address some of those aspects where, where we still have a long way to go forward when it comes to the kind of consumption that we're talking about on our handheld devices? Well, firstly, I'm not looking forward to the day when every, all content consumption will be on a, a handheld device because then I probably won't be invited to the webinar to talk about broadcast because broadcast itself will probably cease to exist. That's point number one. Secondly, I think 
as this COVID era has shown us, 600 million people tune into television every single day. These are 600 million unduplicated viewer counts. 307 million people watch television seven days a week. This is on their television sets. God knows how many hundreds of millions watch it on their mobile phones because so much of linear television is now available as data packs. Thirdly, I think the growth in OTD subscriber numbers is it needs to be tempered a little. The, the enthusiasm needs to be tempered by the realization that a lot of these subscription number increases are because of the free telco packs that are coming in with OTTs rolled into the data plans. Is that going to continue? If it does continue, at what price point will it continue? Can people afford to, uh, afford to pay, those, pay those prices with the economy, etc., depressed, with consumer spending down, with consumer sentiment down? There is bound to be a reordering of priorities. And everything is going to have multiple linkages and downstream effects. For example, the size of crews when it comes to film and television production. They're, they're bloated. Perhaps we need to look, start looking at formats where you start shooting with leaner crews, not just for health and safety, but for also practical reasons. I mean, every star has a retinue of 12, 20 people and four vanity vans. Is that sustainable? I mean, is that even uh, sensible from a safety standards perspective? So I think every little aspect needs to be looked at. And as far as the earlier question about creativity is concerned, I have no doubt that invention, uh, that creativity or necessity is the mother of invention. What is creativity if, or what is invention if not creativity? This has always been an enterprise of creativity. I think every age has gone through its disruptions. And now, of course, this cataclysmic event makes disruption sound like a faded cliche. We're talking about reset and reboot. So we need to look at every single aspect of the business and the way in which we do things and the downstream effects of it and see how uh, you know things need to be rejigged and completely reset. All right, I think we're also running out of time, but it's a perfect moment for me to start taking closing comments from our panelists. Uh, Arun, let me again start here with you. Uh, in, in addition to what you've said, which perfectly sums up what the future is really looking like, tell us also the one thing that we expect you'll be watching in the next one week. And especially my question to you is uh, that if, if, if you had nothing to do but watch television or your handheld uh, device and not work, what is the one thing on your must watch list? It doesn't have to be on your platform. And if you want to plug, your, go ahead. What? Well, I think, Shweta, perhaps for the sake of fairness, you should say it should not, the answer should not be about things that are on your platform. Yes. Uh, and I, if that I were the case, I'm in that, but right I, I, in the I, middle of... Yeah, because that would be work. Well, at, at the moment, I'm, I, I'm right in the middle of The Night Manager on Amazon Prime. I think it's an absolutely fabulous series. But otherwise, I'm really looking forward to the new season of Dynamo. Uh, the world-famous uh, illusionist who's coming back to History TV 18 after a gap of five years. So I hope viewers will watch out for him. It's a great short series, but absolutely mind-blowing. Great, Arun. Thanks for those amazing recommendations. Aparna, your must-watch list. Um, I think I want to catch up with a lot of movies from the 90s and early 2000s that I missed, you know. Probably go back to those uh, younger years when I was still in twenties, uh, and you know, do some uh, early early song dances of Amir Khan and Juhi Chawla. So yeah, why not? You know, maybe I'll live a little bit of nostalgia. The rest of viewing, anyways, across OTTs happens as part of work. So I just want to go live some younger days. All right, Sanjay, what are you watching next few days? Uh, you're on mute. Uh, not too much. I'm not watching too much. I'm not too much of a TV or OTT uh, person. I prefer to watch on, on uh, the screen. But uh, maybe I might catch uh, Money Heist is what everybody say, recommending to watch Money Heist. Shagato? Well, my new show is launching. You know, I hope the others watch that. It's for your honor. Uh, but I'm going to watch a show called SCARD, uh, which is an Israeli show which I've been putting away for a long time. But I definitely want to watch that. All right, thank you all. With such dynamic leaders in this industry, I'm sure the reboot, reset, 
all of that is set to happen. There is creative thinking going on. There is a, a reorientation of how this industry needs to move forward. Uh, but clearly, these will be very, very interesting times. We'll be watching out for the industry will be back on track, uh, back on, on the reboot path, but it will still be uh, a few more months to years of tough times ahead. Uh, we will be watching out for that space to see what really comes forward. But thank you all for those wonderful, wonderful comments uh, and uh, your inputs around what's really going on in this space right now. Anushri, I can hand over back to you. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you to all our lovely panelists. I think it was a lovely discussion and I, and I hope to see all of you at the Content India show in Mumbai, 29th to the 31st of October. Fingers crossed. May we be able to do this. And if you have any queries about the show, please do write to me at cis at nm-india.com. Thank you, everyone, once again. It was a great show.